Hey guys, this is Kramer Glaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the easy troubleshooting of multi-speed ECM blower motors used for HVAC. This one right here is the X13 blower motor, and on the end you have a motor module. So right here is the motor module. This one is a broad ocean ECM blower motor, and on the end you have a, a motor module, and that's this one right here. And then here's just another version of the broad ocean ECM blower motor. Now you notice that the electrical connections are just a slightly different. This one just has spade connectors. This one has one large connector on the end. And this one has the connector actually on the motor itself. A quick way to tell if you have an ECM blower motor is if you have both high voltage and low voltage wires connected to the blower motor and you don't have a capacitor. If you have a capacitor, it's connected to a PSE blower motor and that only has high voltage wires connected to it and there is no control board on the back such as this one right here. So an ECM blower motor has a control board module attached to the back of the blower motor. I wanna go over the electrical wiring for a blower motor such as this first before we get into the troubleshooting. This right here is the electrical connections for the X13 blower motor, and this one's for the broad ocean blower motor. Now you can see that this one tab right here is larger than these three. Well, these three small ones, those are your high voltage taps, and they're going to be hot all the time. The blower motor is not going to turn on until it gets its 24 volt signal wires, and so you have your 24 volt hot wires down here. These are for your speeds, and this one right here is your common for your 24 volts. So this is not part of your high voltage taps, this is your low voltage common. So these are the same, this one and this one are the same. And usually these are just raised letters, but I put a little Sharpie on them so that you can see the, the letters and the numbers. So if this was a 120 volt motor, and you would, you'd be able to read that right here on the rating plate. Uh, but this one right here, if this is 120 volts, then this is the L for hot and N for neutral or common. And then this is your ground. So that is your high voltage. So this is your hot, that's your common, and this is your ground. If this was 240 volts, and once again, you'd read that right over on the rating plate, this will be one of the hots right here on the L, and the other hot will be on the N, and then you just have your ground. Right here is your common for your 24 volts, and you can see that that one's bigger than these, and your speeds are, for your lowest speed is 1, and your highest speed is 5, so you have 24 volt hot signal wires, so you're only... This blower motor is only going to turn on when you send 24 volts to the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, or the 5. So it's only going to be one of these that's going to be hot at a time. And your control board at your, your furnace or your air handler, that's going to be what's powering the 24 volt signal wire over here to tell this blower motor to turn on. So you're always going to have high voltage to this anytime that the furnace or air handler is on. So this broad ocean blower motor has a color code right here, and that's because it doesn't have one large connector for the electrical wiring. So first of all, this is a 120 volt blower motor right there. And up at the top, you see that it's W for neutral. So that's this one right here. And then black is your line voltage for your 120 volt hot. And then your yellow slash green, that's your ground. And that's right here. That goes to the ground frame. And then you have your, your color speeds. So these are your 24 volt speed wires. And first of all, I wanna point out that green is your common, so that's not a speed, that's your, your path back to the control board. So each of these right here is a hot that's gonna come off of the control board to tell this blower motor what speed to run in. So red is your lowest speed, that's number one. Orange is second from lowest. Blue is medium. Yellow is second from highest. And gray is highest. So this, this one happens to follow kind of a normal color code, except for that, that last one is usually black for the highest speed. But you can't go by just the color wires on these ECM blower motors. You need to read the wiring diagram because a lot of times there are all kinds of various colors. So just be aware of that. So here we have a 240 volt X13 blower motor. And we have our high voltage line right here, our 240 volts, which right now is the power is turned off, but Normally, it's going to always have the power on to this. So you're going to have one is your 120 volt leg, and then your other 120 volt leg, which is going to equal 240 volts, and then your, your ground wire. So that's what you got right here for your high voltage, which anytime the power's on to an air handler or furnace, this high voltage is going to be hot. Then right here, you have our common to this transformer. So what you can do is you can just take alligator clips from the common 
on the control board to the C terminal and another alligator clip from the red and then put that test point on either one, two, three, four, or five in order to test if this blur motor is going to turn on. You could also just have a little test transformer with a, with a plug end so you can just plug it in. And right now I have a 24 volt fuse that's just a 3 amper right here, right on the hot. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on in low speed on the number one, and then we'll do that again over on the five. So I just turned the high voltage line on, and now I'm going to turn the low voltage on. So right now it's working, and I have 24 volts on this number one terminal, so I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect that. So this blower motor should shut off if this blower motor was good. Anytime you lose your 24 volt signal wires, that blower motor should shut off, but you can see that this one is not shutting off. So in order to shut that off, I had to shut off the high voltage, but now I just go ahead and turn that back on. And right now we don't have 24 volts on the five, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. So you can see it's now spinning. I'm gonna turn number five off. I'll do that right here at the connection, just so you can visually see it. And that time it shut off. So you can see we're having a problem with your first speed and it's just not shutting off once we disconnect our 24 volt power. But on our higher speed over here, it is shutting off. So that can be one of the problems if you have a blower motor that just runs continuously. So you wanna make sure that if you don't have any 24 volt wire uh, connected right here on the speed taps and it's still running, then you know that the blower motor is bad. And what's really bad is not just this part of the motor, but it's the module on the end of the X13. So this right here is a, another ECM blower motor and we have our high voltage is live to this blower motor and it's waiting for a 24 volt signal. And as you can see right here on our multimeter, we have 27 volts on these two connections. And this particular blower motor got taken out because the module is not telling the motor to go ahead and turn on. So right now we are sending voltage and we do have our, our high voltage over here as well, but our motor is just not turning on. So in this case, it's most likely the module, but we can also check the, the blower motor. A lot of times these X13s, they just come as a, a whole motor. And make sure that when you, when you are replacing these, that the new motor is set for the particular model number furnace or air handler that you have and that, this, that the correct CFM settings are, are put into it. So they need to be programmed. And if you do a, a replacement or uh, rescue ECM blower motor, you need to check the, the airflow once you install that because you got to make sure that you're still pushing the correct amount of airflow across the evaporator coil so that the air conditioner doesn't freeze. And so also if you're running a furnace, you want to make sure that the furnace doesn't overheat. So here we have a Broad Ocean ECM blower motor. This is 240 volts, and we have this one wired in just the same manner as the X13. So we have our high voltage, our common, and our 24 volt wire. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. So another problem that you could have is that the blower motor ramps up and ramps down, ramps up, ramps down. And normally you're gonna be testing this uh, with the blower motor still in the squirrel cage and with the furnace or air handler door still shut. So it's gonna be in its normal operating parameters. So it's not gonna be like this, but I just wanna show you what it, what it sounds like when it ramps up and ramps down. So you can see it's ramping up and ramping down. But once again, I have this out of the squirrel cage so it's gonna act a little bit differently than when it is installed in the system. Now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my 24 volt wire. I'm just gonna do it right here. And now the blower motor shut off. So that's actually working when I disconnect the 24 volt power, unlike that X13 we tested earlier. So remember that if the blower motor is ramping up, ramping down, then it's not this part of the blower motor that's bad, it's the control board that's, that's controlling this part of the blower motor. So I'm gonna show you what the inside of this looks like. So to take this motor module off, you just have to unscrew this bolt right here and this bolt, and it comes off of right here and right there. Now when you're taking this off, you have to be careful because these connections are still gonna be in there and you kind of have to slip your finger or a screwdriver in there and push in on this in order to slide this connector out. 
Now on this one, it's a little different. You just have to press on the back. So this is the broad ocean blower motor right here. I'll show you what the uh, X13 looks like in a second. So when you disconnect the power to this, you can usually just wait a couple minutes just to make sure that your, your power is discharged on the inside of this before you go putting your finger in here. Uh, but you shut the power off, wait a few minutes, and then you can go ahead and disconnect these two bolts and take these two connectors off. And then you have your, your motor module. So most likely, if there's a problem, this is going to be bad, but I just want to show you what this looks like as well. You have another board right here. On the X13, you don't have this. It's just the module itself, real, real quick and easy. I would not suggest uh, taking this off and moving it because it's located in, in, a, in a right spot right there. And this is monitoring the rotation of the blower motor. So what you would do is if you're just going to order a new... Um, blower motor and it'll come with the module and you don't want to take this part out you can just try replacing this by itself onto this uh, control board and onto the motor and see if that works if not then you can uh, take out the entire blower motor and just replace it with your new hub your new board and new motor all together you can just leave it all together just like that now in reference to testing this to make sure that this part of the motor is good I'll just show you what you can do for that. You can test it with resistance. So with your multimeter set to resistance, you're just going to check each of these connectors right here to ground. You want to make sure that you're reading OL and that there is no connection to ground. If there was a connection to ground, then that means that the, the windings are shorted. Then you're going to check the resistance between each pair. And you want to make sure that your motor is not moving while you're doing this part right here. And you see that we're reading, let's see here, I gotta make sure our connections are tight. 9 9.4. 9.4. 9.4, okay. So this, the actual motor part is good, and it's just a module that's bad. So now we're going to go ahead and check our X13. And once again, you can just try replacing just the module on the end and seeing if that will fix the motor. If not, I would say replace the entire, entire motor completely. And the other thing that could be happening is in this module right here, you could have one of these capacitors burst. And if that's the case, if the inside has, has got the... The fluid on the windings you want to just replace the whole thing and you could have some other burnt connectors in here so you could just do a quick visual check on the inside of the the module to see if there's something that's bad or smells burnt in here so that's something that you can do real quick just to eliminate this as being the problem you're not really going to be testing points on this control board or on this one in order to determine if these ones are bad so you just kind of have to do a visual check of this and make sure that this is good in order to tell which part you need to replace. So here we have our X13 blower motor, and we've already taken the screws out of right here and here. We're just gonna go ahead and open it up. This one's a little easier. You just go ahead and squeeze that, and you have your motor module. So something real quick to look at is your, your inrush current limiter right here. If you see that it's bad, you might see a burnt connection right here. Your capacitors could be popped, so that could be an issue. And on here, I don't know if you can make that out or not, but it says it's a 20, and this is a 1R020. This could be uh, corrected in the field. You can just cut this out and resolder a new one right back on here. You just got to make sure it's the, the same um, one. This is a SL22, 1R020, so it just means it's a 20 amp uh, inrush max. So this could pop just due to lightning or, or some other issue at the house, a voltage irregularity. Uh, some, some type of problem could make this pop. Your capacitors could go bad. But that's what it looks like right here. And you're going to test this the same way we did with our other motor. You don't see anything monitoring uh, the rotation right here. It's just that module on the end. And you're just going to make sure that this does not have continuity with the ground frame. And you make sure that these three right here, each pair has the same uh, resistance reading. And that's how you make sure that this part of the motor is good. And this is the part of the motor that's usually mounted in there. 
So you could just switch the hub real quick, but typically we're just replacing the, the entire thing with these multi-speed ECM blower motors. So I hope this explanation helped. It's real simple to diagnose these. Just put power to it, make sure that you have your high voltage going to it, and then you just go ahead and put your 24 volt power wires on to go ahead and get it to turn on. If it doesn't turn on, and you know you have your line voltage, and you know you have your low voltage, and you know that the, the motor is bad. Uh, so at least the module is bad. Uh, if you put power to this and it ramps up and ramps down, ramps up or ramps down, you want to make sure that you have no blockage in your duct. And if you do and you correct that and you still have this thing ramping up and ramping down, then the motor module may have got damaged just due to maybe high amperage during while it was running and trying to overcome the friction of, say, a dirty filter. If you send your control voltage to this and then you take your control voltage off, and the motor is just continuing to spin, once again, it's your motor module that's bad. Other things that could be bad is just the, the motor itself or maybe the bearings. You know, if this has some type of wiggling in there and some movement or it's frozen, you know, then you know that it's this part and not the module, but typically the module will go bad if this, if this gets locked up because it's gonna start drawing high amperage across the, uh, the electrical connections inside the module. Make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback and ebook, both available at our website at aecservicetech.com. We also have our quick reference cards available there, and both of these products are also available over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech channel.